Sweet Napoli, birthplace of the great Aquinas, founded by the Greeks in 450 BC and conquered in turn by the Romans, the Goth, Normans, the French, the Spaniards, the Habsburg, the Bourbons. Under German occupation from 1941 until captured by the American army in 1943. But a tenacious people, these Neapolitans. Betrayed by kings, enslaved by invaders, they have survived it all, swallowing their conquerors one by one. In 1950, Naples was a city of rubble, brutalized after years of war. Population about one million, unemployed over 200,000. A day's pay, 90 cents, and the price of butter, one dollar a pound. In the streets and alleys, 50,000 children of school age running wild, ragged, dirty, uncared for. These wild, abandoned children were the Scognizzi, the street urchins. What do you want? I want to know who you are. I'm Nino. I'm ten, I think. <coughs> I was born in a bus with three blocks from here. I have seven brothers and four sisters, and a good mother and a good father. <coughs> We slept in one room, the whole family. Then last winter, I got this cough. <coughs> and they said I had to go because my little sister got it too. <coughs> they were right. I understand these things. Now I'm on my own. Sometimes I go home. They pack me food through the window. They all miss me and my mother cries. <coughs> But my cough is getting better, and soon I'll be home again, right? Right. My name is Pepino. It wasn't so bad at home. We had two beds for myself and my three brothers. My father made pretty good money laying brick, but he ran away with another woman. My brothers didn't mind, because they were never home anyway. But I couldn't eat the food she bought or stay in the room she used in her business. My father's in Milan now. One of these days, I'm going up there and live with him. At least he knows where his father is. When I was seven, the Nazis took my father to a labor camp in Germany. He never came back. My mother married again to a man who had seven boys. They were older than me and he beat me up. He beat my mother up, too. I'll do anything for money. I gotta get my mother out of that basso before they kill her. I know Naples like I know my own father. <laughs> That's a joke, because I really never knew who my father was. Neither did my mother who loved me so much she put me in an orphanage when I was three days old. Ah, I'm not complaining. Not me, Carlucci. I'm doing fine. I worked the tourist trade. Happy rich foreigners passing through the Sorrenta and Itcha. They've got the price. And I supply what they want. Sometimes what they don't even know they want. <laughs> Tonight, I sleep in the doorway. This business is bad and it's off season. One of these days, I'm going to have an apartment on my own, up in Vomero, with a movie star from Capri. I read Maserati, I got my eyes on. Hey, Mario. Hey. 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 <laughs> you pay? These Scunizzi think I'm one of their gang. If they knew I was a priest, they'd cut my throat. Insight. An exploration in depth of the spiritual conflicts of the 20th century. Insight.
do you do? I'm Father Kaiser. The human race is a great family. God is the father. All men are brothers, one of another. Love is what joins all men together. It makes us one family under God. God made us to love. This is our fulfillment. When we do love, we are complete human beings. We are worthy members of the human family. There's nothing more natural for us than loving and being loved. Yet there is also nothing more difficult. It is so easy for us to ignore the sufferings of our brothers in the human family. In 1950, 50,000 boys roamed the streets of Naples. The society in which they found themselves seemed indifferent to their plight. They were left without food, without shelter, without schooling, and most tragic of all, without love. Today's story deals with a man consecrated to love, a man whose love impelled him to change this deplorable situation. These boys had lost awareness of their own dignity. This man was determined to restore it. He wanted to carry love into the lives of these boys, but he was afraid they were too hardened to accept it. Who stole the chestnuts? He did. Where? The Piazza Mercato. What? From that old man? From the fountain? He's blind. Yeah, blind. Blind is the bat. Well, what are you picking on him for? What's the difference? Ooh, you steal from him again, I'll show you the difference. All right, Mario. Don't get sore. Take it easy. That goes for the rest of you, too. You understand? I want you to leave the beggars, the cripples, and the poor alone. Uh, who do you think you are coming around here telling us every night what to do? Throwing your weight around, what are you? A cop, a stool pigeon? If I was, you'd be in jail. Him in jail? Yeah. Him in jail? Yeah. Hey, that guy took our picture. Hey, take it easy. All right, so he took our picture. What's the difference? Aren't we the best looking Scunizzi in Naples, huh? Come on, settle down. Stop worrying, Borelli. How can you tell, Gino? Oh, perhaps he won't be convinced. He'll be convinced. With these pictures and anything else. I see you're wearing your collar again. for human beings to torture their children like this. There are worse situations, Your Eminence. Like this. And this. And this. Enough. Enough. Why should such things be? Why? Why? Because the people of Naples have stopped loving one another, that's why. Because a Neapolitan needs love like like a fish needs water, like a bird needs air, and with God's help, and with... Go on. Go on. These are not bad children, Your Eminence. They... They hunger for love. For... For a home. For security. And so they grow warped and twisted. And yes, they rob and they steal, but it's because they're afraid. They're afraid that honesty will, will make them victims of circumstance. You speak with great conviction, Father. <laughs> I am a Neapolitan. <laughs> I know, as a child, I played in those alleys. Suffer little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Tell me, Father, is Naples your kingdom of heaven? The children of Naples, yes. They could turn it into a hell on earth. But it is that already. We must do everything in our power to change it. What power? You, a poor priest? 
Do you think the government is going to help? Or the aristocracy? No, Father. Don't raise your hopes. These are bad times. When survival is at stake, charity is a luxury the rich choose not to afford. And in Naples, poverty has always been accepted as the natural condition of man. I thought the church could help. The church? How? Do you think the church is a, a business with stored up millions? We are poor, Father, like yourself, like all priests, bound by the vows of poverty. But I'm not asking for millions. You see, I, I thought your office could give them some kind of protection. I, a, a tent. A tent? Well, to keep out the cold night air. But tents are cold. But it, it's something. No. I won't permit it. Tell me, Father, are you acquainted with the Church of Notre Dame? You're transferring me. I asked you a question. Yes, Your Eminence, I know the Church very well. Have you seen it lately? Uh, no, not, not in a few years. Well, it was bombed during the war, now it's abandoned. It has a tight roof, a dry floor. And if I were a young priest in search of the kingdom of heaven, I think I should find it in that lovely church of Mother Day. Well, you're asking me to give up my work. Don't be so impulsive, Borelli. I'm giving you that church to make a home for your boys. How explain Father Borelli's dedication to the welfare of the Skordnitsi? What has caused this man of God to become a man of the slums? The answer to these questions is a simple one. These boys are thieves, scavengers, criminals. But they remain human beings possessed of infinite dignity. In them, Father Borelli sees the face of Christ. In the anguish of these urchins, he discovers the sufferings of Christ. By serving them, Father Borelli knows he is serving Christ. Christ identifies himself with each and every member of the human race, but with some more than others. Who are his favorites? The poor, the sick, the despised. He tells us to love all men, but he does point out a priority. We are to serve first those who suffer the most, those who need us most, those who are most desolate, most forgotten, most abused. If you would find God, look into the hearts of the people around you. Select those who suffer the most. Select those who need you most. You can serve God by serving them. You can encounter God by giving yourself to them. This is what motivates Father Borelli. drive a nail straight before. Repairing the damaged church of Mata Dei was a back-breaking job. But Father Borelli was fully prepared to break not only his back, but every bone in his body to get on with the task before him. Not a bad beginning. Anything you can get, we can use. Okay, I got four pans with holes in them. What do you do with those? Well, we'll save them and uh, use them to strain spaghetti with. Strain spaghetti with. 
You know, I don't know who got the better deal. You were the cardinal. Seemed I couldn't do anything for him. Now it seems I can't do anything for you. Well, at least the lumber's good. Forgive me, Lord. But he doesn't know any more about the lumber than he knows about the nails. Priest by day, Scunizzo by night. A grotesque paradox. But they had accepted him, and he had to make his contribution to their devious code of honor. He did not participate in the direct act of sin. He was involved, certainly, as a lookout, as a barrier between the youths and the police. But he withdrew as much as possible from the sinful act. And so on that razor's edge between right and wrong, he took his stand. He was committed in that dark kingdom. To lead them, he had to understand them. And unless they looked to him as their leader, he could never survive the climactic moment when he must reveal himself as a priest and offer them a home, a way out of the wilderness of their discontent. Hey, 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 Mario. Hey, Paisano, what about you, huh? Hey, you're supposed to be our big boss, our leader. You talk about share and share like so, share with us. What did you bring? <laughs> you know, you talk a lot, Colucci, but you don't use your head. Last week, when the cops had you by the seat of your pants, who talked them out of arresting you, huh? Me. And without me, where are you going to get the right price for this kind of loot? He's sore, Mario. Before you came, he was the boss, the leader. All we got was trouble. Were you? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> hey, you know, come to think of it, I did bring something. Look at that. What is it? What's he? Hair or maybe, huh? Here. Now smell that. Mario. Uh, now drink it. Drink it, me? Yeah, you. Come on. Me drink you it? You drink it. Let me see you drink it. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. That's enough. It's cough medicine. <laughs> but we need many things. We need, we need clothing, bedding, food. But mostly we need money. Everybody needs money. Well, that's why I've come to you, sir. Uh, a few thousand lira for God's children. I'm glad you call them God's children, because they're certainly not mine. Thieves, pickpockets, rascals, that's what they are. No, no. That's what they have become, not what they are. And you believe in miracles? I believe in these boys. <laughs> you will provide the miracle. Me? <laughs> <laughs> Your money and our faith. Our faith and my money. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> uh, how much do you want? A hundred thousand lira. A hundred thousand? To, to start out with. I'll give you ten thousand. Fifty thousand lira. Twenty thousand, take it or leave it. Forty thousand? Get out. Thirty thousand lira. Get out. Get out! I said get out! A hundred thousand lira. Who does he think he is? A hundred... I don't care what you say. Thirty thousand, and that's the end of it. Father Borelli finds begging the most difficult side of his apostolate. But he does it not only because his boys badly need what he begs but also because the business executive, despite his reluctance, needs this opportunity to serve his less fortunate brothers in the human family. Christ tells us that our salvation will be dependent upon our response to our brother's need. Even a cup of cold water, he says, given to the least of his brothers, will not go without its reward. Wealth is a sacred trust. Those who have it are obliged to use it to assuage the sufferings of others. But to give money is only part of what is required. One must give oneself. One must identify oneself with those in need. One must feel with those who suffer. For the need of one man is the shame of all. The suffering of one man is a scandal for us all. I am more than my brother's keeper. I am my brother's brother. This relationship imposes obligations on me. I must move to meet my brother's need. And I must learn to do it in such a way as to respect and enhance his dignity as a human person rather than destroy it. Father Borelli is attempting to do just that.
superb. Just like Papa used to make it. Papa? Sure, at our house, Papa did all the cooking. That's too many, Gino. Oh, you never know. That happens to be wonderful soup. Four. Four? Maybe nobody at all. I, no, I can promise you one. That I can promise you. It's a cold night, and those streets are full of hungry kids. I, I bet they come in droves, huh? Sure. To an old church, to be fed by two priests. Oh, Gino, how little you know those rascals. Well, they'll follow you like the Pied Piper. You're their leader, so they'll do whatever you ask. As a priest, I don't know. As a leader of their gang, maybe, but as a priest, I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? You don't know these kids. Priests are their enemy. Like, like the police, like the law, like society that has pounded them into the gutter. No, Gino. I spent too much time with these kids to forget how easily they can hate. All right, Burley. Do you want me to come with you? Oh, no. <laughs> Two priests? that make it twice as hard. No. Besides, you, you've done the work of ten men already. No, I've got to do this alone. You can pray for me, Gino. That you can do for me. What's coming? A black crow. What's he want? Hey, Tonino. You ever roll a priest? What for? You ever try to peddle a scapular metal? Good evening. On your way, priest. Hello, Nino. How's your car? Who are you? Don't you know me? Look, all we know is that you're a priest. So why don't you go back to the church and stick your head in a barrel of holy water, huh? What would a character like you know about holy water? Look, what do you want anyway? Look at me. <coughs> who wants to look at a priest? Hey, look at me. Look, who are you waiting? What do you want around here? Hey, it's Mario. That's right, Mario Barelli. It is Mario. Hey, what's the idea, huh? I want you to take help wherever you can get it. But, but, but... No, 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 but, 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 but. No more sleeping in doorways for you. Tonight, you're going to sleep in a bed, a real bed, with a blanket to keep you warm. What's your disguise for, Mario? What'd you do, strip a monk? No, I'm a priest. Since when? Five years ago. Oh. Yes, I'm a real priest with the grace to say mass and to absolve sin and with God's help to put a warm shelter over your heads and some warm food into your bellies, huh? <laughs> Why'd you wait until now to tell us? Well, I, I, I know how you feel about priests, but you're wrong. Priests, priests want to share your burden. No. We're brothers in Christ. And now we hear about the baby Jesus. <coughs> no, listen to me. Priests want you to stand shoulder to shoulder, together, so we can try and make a better world for everybody. I knew this was coming. I suppose he's got a better world for us, eh? No, not a better world. But it's a nice place. It's warm, there's a fire, and there's enough food for a good meal. What's the catch? No catch. No strings. Look, you come tonight. You sleep and, and you get up tomorrow morning and you leave. But if you like it, then you can stay. No preaching? No preaching. That's, that's a promise. Look, this, this little fellow needs medicine and he needs a doctor. 
and I'm going to see that he gets it. Come on, Mina. No strings. Lucci and his friends will have a decent place to sleep tonight, and tomorrow they'll have three square meals. But more important than that, they now have a home, which is an atmosphere of love. They are surrounded by people who respect their dignity, people who care. Like every other member of the human race, Carlucci sensed his own dignity. But he found that no one recognized that dignity. No one loved him. This made him bitter and resentful. It made him unwilling to love. This is a great tragedy for a human being, for a successful person is one who loves. An unsuccessful person is one who does not love. It is as simple as that. Carlucci had never met anyone like Father Borelli before. This man cared about him, he found, simply and solely because he was a human being made in the image and likeness of God. A person possessed of infinite dignity because a brother in the human family. Father Borelli was willing to initiate love, to give love before it was returned, to give love even if it was never returned. Carlucci had difficulty understanding this kind of love but he could not deny its reality, nor escape its influence. Once he allowed such love to enter his life, changes began to occur. The icy walls surrounding his ego started to melt. His personality opened out. He accepted love. He began to give love. His redemption had begun. This program is not an appeal for funds for the urchins of Naples, but it is an appeal to you to do what Father Borelli did and start your own insurrection of kindness. Where there is no love, put love and there you will find love. Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church.